right, working through the ECG course, nine more lessons, counting this one. We're in level one. We just dealt with paste rhythms. Now we're going to talk about junctional here for a little bit. And then the next one, the big one, the hairy one. You're going to want to rest up for that one. AV blocks. Junctional rhythms. Here we go. The requirement for a junctional rhythm is that the impulse comes out of the node or the junction. It didn't come out of the SA node. You may or may not have P waves. If you have P waves, they may be inverted. If you have P waves, they may be before or after the QRS. The QRS may be wide or may be normal. Didn't really narrow it down much for you there, did we? So junctional rhythms, although not very common, um, you really can't key off the P wave and you really can't key off the QRS. Um, and so, you know, they may also have other issues. You have a junctional rhythm that's aberrantly, abnormally conducted with a bundle branch block. You may have a PVC in your junctional rhythm. Junctional rhythms come in three flavors based on their rate. The junctional escape rhythm, or just a junctional rhythm, usually runs in the 40s to 60s. Uh, it's an escape rhythm because the SA node didn't work, and so the junctional rhythm is helping the patient escape a funeral. There may also be an accelerated junctional rhythm, which is 60 up to 100, and then junctional tack is greater than 100. You're not going to have P waves. Oh, but wait, you might have P waves. It might be before or after or upside down. No, I don't know. So junctional rhythms, um, a lot of variation there. And so what's causing this? Well, remember the junction, the AV junction, which is the area around the AV node in the bundle, his common bundle before it splits. That is a backup pacemaker. There are several backup pacer sites in the heart because we're trying again to escape death. So if the SA node doesn't work, then when, when it's been long enough um, that, that the SA nodes had a chance to work, then the junction, the node and the junction will start firing in the 40 to 60 range, and that will give you a junctional escape rhythm. Sometimes the junction gets a little out of control. That's where the accelerated junction rhythm comes from. For some reason, that AV node and AV junction are, are firing sooner than, excuse me, sooner than they should, you get that accelerated junction rhythm. Here's a view of lots of junctional rhythms. You'll see some have upside down P waves before the QRS. Some have no P waves. Some you can't really tell what you're looking at. And so a junctional rhythm that's really slow can be confused with an idioventricular rhythm that's kind of fast. And so sometimes you're making your really best guess as to what's going on. And junctional rhythms, I think, are kind of a, a foggy, shady, gray sort of, sort of zone for us all. But here's some examples. And we'll do lots of practice in class. Summary, there's no P wave, or it might be inverted, or it might be after. QRS can be wide. If it's got a bundle branch with it, it could be normal. If it doesn't, the rate's usually in the 40, 50 range, but it could be accelerated and, and be up you know, up to 100 or over 100, but it's going to be regular. It's going to be regular. So atrial fib, there's no clear P waves, and it's irregular, irregular. Junctional, there's no P waves usually, but it's going to be regular, very, very regular. So probably just confused you. Hang with it. Uh, repetition is the key, and we'll do lots of examples in a regular class.